Welcome to the Art of Living podcast. I'm Zafar Majid. My mother-in-law is a monster. Not mine. Alhamdulillah, I had a very, very good, beautiful mother-in-law who is no longer here. Who may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her with a, a permanent abode in Jannah. But I'm talking about the things that I hear from people who complain about someone in their family or social circles who is very, very toxic. And I've heard many people complain about their mother-in-laws, their daughter-in-laws, or their sister-in-laws. So today we are going to talk about these toxic relationships and how we can resolve them and take that toxicity out of these relationships. First, a humble request for you to subscribe and follow our channel to be notified of future content to help us also to continue building this content for you inshallah i have a story which i want to start with the story is about alicia alicia gets married and uh, obviously once all the romantic notions of uh, a new sort of uh, uh, pairing a new spouse has uh, worn off then the reality kicks in she's living in with her in-laws mother-in-law sister-in-law and what she realizes is that she has a nasty mother-in-law. A mother-in-law is always constantly sort of making remarks, sarcastic remarks, who's always having a go at her, always belittling her, always undermining her, and always ordering her. So this continues for many months, months turn into years. And one day, Alicia comes up with a plan that she's going to get rid of her mother-in-law. She is concocts a plan that she is going to get rid of her mother-in-law so this problem is resolved once and for all. And the only way to resolve it is to kill her off, finish her off. So what she does, she goes to see a Hakim, a herbalist, somebody that she knew she called uh, a Hakim uncle, a herbalist who goes and gives you herbal medicines, can give you lots of different concoctions, poisons even perhaps. So she goes, she tells him and she comes up with this super duper plan that she wants to poison her mother-in-law. And she tells this Hakim uncle that this is what she wants to do. And he says, okay. She offers him money obviously. And he says, yes, of course, I can help you with that. But we need to make a plan. So I'll give you the poison. You, rather than giving a poison to her, that which will kill her instantly, I'll give you such a poison that you feed her every single day and it will slowly poison her body. The poison will get into her bloodstream and then slowly start shutting all the organs off. But this poison is a very, very slow reaction one. A slow one where basically it can take many months before the full effects of this poison is realized and she will die slowly rather than instantly in that way also nobody will ever suspect you so she thinks that's a great plan but he said one more thing to bear in mind that in that process of poisoning her over the many months to come even may even take a year. This poison will kill her off and it may take even a year. So you have to change your attitude towards her. So every day, start making some nice food for her. Slowly put a few drops of this poison. But change your attitude towards her. So nobody will therefore suspect you. Give the best character from your part in terms of generosity, your kindness and uh, your etiquettes when you are dealing with her. Imagine, he said, that you are dealing with your own mother. So you are feeding and dealing with your own mother. And then you watch a year down the line, she will be gone and you will be free. I understand, you know, that you cannot leave the house you're probably not able to afford to buy another house and leave your mother-in-law behind so this is probably the best plan for you so they both come up with this plan he gives us this lethal concoction that she she 
needs to sort of use to poison her mother-in-law's food every single day. So what Alicia does, the name of our protagonist in this story, is that she goes home, she starts cooking some lovely meals for her mother-in-law. Every day she's putting a few drops of this poison and before she before you know it these days turn into weeks weeks turn into months and she is now on her guard where that she has to ensure that she's got the best conduct in that relationship towards her mother-in-law and she is in the process cooking all these lovely meals for her and something strange happens in the interim that her mother-in-law's attitude towards her changes and she realizes that alicia is such a caring wonderful daughter-in-law and she begins to start liking her and funnily enough they both develop this strange bond of friendship where they start getting on with each other so mother-in-law is treating the daughter-in-law much better the daughter-in-law is showing the best etiquette the best behavior and due to the mother-in-law's reaction towards her she begins to alicia begins to start liking her mother-in-law so now probably six months into the plan she realizes that she's made a grave error in making this plan to start poisoning her mother-in-law she runs back to the hakeem uncle and she says uncle uncle i think i've made a terrible mistake i've been poisoning my mother-in-law Please give me something that will reverse the effects of this poison because I no longer want to kill her. She's changed her attitude towards me. She's now become my best friend. She treats me like her own daughter and I now treat her like my own mother. So I now have seen a different side to her and I no longer want to kill her. And the Hakim uncle, the herbalist, starts smiling and he said, Alicia, I never gave you poison to feed her. What I actually gave you to put in her food was just vitamin drops. These was just some nutritious drops that would have benefited your mother-in-law and make her even more healthy. So as you can see, Alhamdulillah, she is more healthier than ever before. Not only because of the nutritional drops of vitamin that I've been giving her, which you have been feeding her, but all the lovely, delicious food that you've been feeding her. The fact is, when you came to see me, I never gave you the poison because I knew the poison was in your mind, which I had to take out. I wasn't giving the poison to feed her. I gave you a plan to take the poison out of your mind and look how it made things better for you. And now your mother-in-law treats you like, your, like her own daughter and you treat her like your own mother. And that, brothers and sisters, is a lesson for myself and yourself. That a lot of the times, that toxicity of toxic relationships is inside of me and you. It's in my mind. It's in my heart. And we are reflecting that to other people. We don't realize that. We say, this person is an evil, cruel, sinister, narcissistic person. I don't want nothing to do with them. But funnily enough, they're thinking exactly the same. That this person is narcissistic. This person is evil. This person is really bad. We don't want to know them. And this becomes a self-perpetuating cycle where relationships are breaking up where brother is not talking to brother, sister is not talking to sister, neighbor is not talking to neighbor, extended family, cousins are not getting on with each other because each one thinks that the other one is evil. But no, nobody ever looks into the mirror and asks themselves how good, bad or ugly am I? Well, more my character. How evil of a conduct do I have towards others which I never ever sit back to analyze and I've seen it in many relationships now where there's two brothers it seems as if the relationship has irretrievably broken down and they are unable to patch up their differences and maybe one brother 
is waiting for the other one to come and reconcile and this one is waiting for this one to come and re reconcile but they're both sitting in their own houses waiting for the other to make that first move and nobody makes that move and what happens is that they end up going into their grave without having patched up that relationship seen it happen so many times now too many times what we need to do is we need to change ourselves we can't change other people the problem is we want to change other people but i have to first start to change myself make sure i have the best conduct make sure that i have the best attitude i have the best dealings with the creation whether it's my brother my sister my parents my neighbor my employees whoever it is that i interact with i have to have the best conduct and then you will see how others will react to you and this is a, going to be a, 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 a different podcast different discussion for another day of why we get upset when others do not treat us the way we expect them to it's because we are waiting for them to do good to us first and then we will reciprocate that with goodness and this is nothing remarkable about a person's personality i've heard it so many times that a person says i'm good to those who are good to me i i am even better to those who treat me good if they treat me good i treat them even better that's absolute nonsense it does not reflect anything remarkable about your personality it's good to be good to those people who are good to you it's easy to be good to those but the real test is how to behave with the people whose conduct is not the best with yourself and that's why we have so much relationships in anarchy as i've said the closest relationships are breaking up now because they have become toxic and they've become toxic for a reason and a lot of the times it's me it's myself who's attributing towards that toxic relationship but i do not look at myself i don't want to change myself i don't want to improve myself i'm expecting the others to you know reach out to me with that olive tree of friendship with that kindness with that generosity and then i will be kind to them i will be generous to them but i will not make that first move so we really all of us need to analyze ourselves look in the mirror and really see whether we are a true reflection of the best of creation rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the last of the messengers the seal of prophethood or are we just an awful nasty version of ourselves so you really need to do some self analysis and uh, be your own biggest critic if you really want to improve those relationships around you